welcome to the Mini Sculpting Super Show. I'm your host, Tom Mason, and today is episode 15, where we are be talking about crafting swords. So I have I had a previous video uh, called, I think, Sculpting Blades, which you can see here. And this is a great video that you should watch uh, before this one if you have missed some of the early steps, and it'll be linked right here in the video. But it talks about the initial stages of creating the main form for the blade. And rather than go over that from the beginning again here, I thought I'd just point you in that direction. With that, let's get started. So the tools you're going to need to start making, crafting this sword with more detail is going to be an X-Acto knife, and then I like two styles of files, a triangle file and a circular file. And what you'll see here is that this sword is actually much thicker than normally what you might want to do but uh, this one's three millimeters and the reasons for that is I wanted extra depth to make a fuller one of the easiest things you can do to add extra detail and dimension to your swords is to add a fuller so in order to do that you start by getting your exacto blade and cutting a straight line from the top tip down to the base and you want to keep this as uh, straight and centered as possible it's try to make the blade totally symmetrical and you're not cutting very deep you're just pressing it enough so you can essentially see a line and, and it really is it's just drawing a guideline uh, you want to press in just a touch so that it can be seen and so that it can help guide your file as you start to define the fuller piece. Once you've created the guideline then you want to grab your triangle file and that file it has a nice sharp edge uh, on one side and it will follow and, and cut into where you made your exacto blade guide and that's good to help uh, keep the line straight and get the actual depth of the fuller started. So you just press that in and start to make a little bit of a triangle groove in the blade. After that's completed you grab your circular file and this is where the final finishing touch of the fuller comes. So on here you again you're just following that line but because of the roundness of the file and I'm using micro files by the way you can use large, larger ones and sometimes they're helpful especially for this is a very very large two-handed sword I'm making for a figure so it can be helpful to have a larger one to, to just span the width of the fuller easier but the uh, smaller needle files give more control but as you're pressing in you start with the tip uh, just to help it stay centered but as you increase the size of the groove you can start using the larger portion of the file and just keep going that way doing that uh, back and forth until you've created a nice kind of half or uh, partial circle into the sword. It's totally fine to do all these steps on a single side or to take them one at a time, flipping it, doing it on the front and then the back. Once the fuller is completed, it's time to uh, start making the edge of the blades. In order to do that, it's just the same as we've done before. You take a large file and you start by filing at roughly a 45 degree angle on one of the corners, one of the four corners. And the reason you do 45 is it helps you chop away the material very quickly. Um, you want to make sure that you bring it down to the halfway point on the blade's edge and then from there you can tilt the blade at a less steep angle back towards the fuller and start um, basically bringing a nice straight clean edge from the the side blade edge up to where the fuller starts and you want to be careful as you are filing down towards the fuller because you don't want to accidentally grind away the fuller you just want to bring it right to the point where you have made that round uh, concave shape in the blade and once you do that you'll have a nice sharp edged blade with a cool fuller in the middle. 
And just like when we were doing the fuller, you can do one side at a time, or you can kind of do all the parts in the stages. So starting with the 45 degree angle, centering up the edge of the blade, do that on all the sides before coming back around with the less steep angle and fine tuning the blade edge up into the fuller. Now that the blade is complete, it's time to create a cross guard for your sword. In order to do that, uh, I like to add a bit of an armature to it, and I use 28 gauge steel wire. Obviously, if you're doing a sword that's uh, much smaller, uh, thinner, then you might want to skip this step and actually just create the cross guard using putty. And to do that, you just pinch on some putty and file it down or cut it down to shape, and then you can add on more afterwards. So, but uh, for this example, I'm going to show you how to do it with some wire. And that can be very helpful because it's, it's an armature, so you can have a lot more control and uh, structure underneath if you want to do something really fancy. So in order to do this, it's very similar to make an armature for a min uh, the miniature itself. You just take a small piece of wire and you create a loop. Once that's done, you slip it on over your wire, the, the, I'm sorry, the main core of your sword, and push it up against the blade as close as possible. And add just a, I like to add a, just a tiny dab of super glue in order to help it stay in place. Once the wire is secured, you can start bending the cross guard into shape. This is just like when you do an uh, armature for a miniature, so it's important to make sure that you have it shaped the way you want before you start adding putty. I almost never sculpt my miniatures in a vacuum, so don't be afraid to size up your sword and, and the elements of it next to the miniature it's going to go with. So as you see here, you know I realized that the armature was way too long for what I wanted in the cross guard, so just go ahead and trim it off. Ah, and what you just saw there was a, uh, I think it's called a hemostat. It's a great tool for holding onto weapons as you're sculpting and managing them. So definitely go pick up that or some other similar clamp. Now we're going to start uh, creating the hilt. And for that, I'm going to use my standard mix of green stuff and Aves Epoxy Sculpt. And for this, it's just 25, 25, 25. 25. <laughs> so uh, yeah, equal parts of all of, of both putties, you know, the blue and yellow, and then the two parts of the Aves together makes a really nice uh, mix. It's still very sticky, so it can, uh, it'll stay put on the uh, armature, uh, but it's also will cure faster and file uh, faster if necessary. Now, this is a rather large weapon, so I was able to basically skin the armature first. Rather than go ahead and start sculpting the entire hilt, I'm just making a, a, a little layer underneath just to help the final layer of the hilt have more area to grab onto. Since this is such a thin wire in the armature, that can be helpful so that the putty doesn't get sloppy and create a void underneath if you start pushing too hard. That's always a risk when when sculpting with putty, if you're too aggressive and um, if there's not enough material for the putty to hold on to underneath. So now let's put some finishing touches on the cross guard. For the, uh, that section, for the, the outer, the actual detail, I'm using the same mix, or similar mix, I should say, as the green stuff, but in this case, I'm using uh, Procreate. You could use the same mix as we did before with the green stuff if that's what you have or that's what you want but for this figure uh, unless I am just filing the material such as with the sword I prefer to use or, or I was kinda of making a challenge for myself to use procreate uh, in the Aves mix for the entire miniature so since I'm sculpting this part the cross guard that's what I did and you just mix up your putty and you're gonna put a thin starting with a fairly thin layer over top uh, unless you need it to be really bulky and using your clay shaper as always is a great tool you just want to start roughly pushing the putty over the understructure 
And it's always important when you're using putty to get all the material on as fast as possible and just bulk it into shape. Don't worry about how perfect and fine detail everything is. Just worry about getting any putty that's touching, get it blended together, and get it roughly into shape because this is it's very soft and sticky at this point. So you want to make sure and get it as much on there as possible when it's easy to manipulate before you go in with the fine details where it's okay when the putty started to set up and get a little firmer. Most of this work is typically done with the clay shaper but once you get the main elements bulked out and on there don't be afraid to pick up your scalpel blade and trim off any excess. It's okay you can always it's okay to put on extra putty. I actually prefer to do that because you can always trim some away but uh, sometimes it can be a little annoying to have to add on extra bits. Just keep at it, you know, pushing it, pushing the material around until you, uh, refining the shape, trimming off extra putty if you need to, and, you know, just go until, uh, sometimes, oh, sometimes it can be helpful to actually set the sculpt aside for, you know, just a couple minutes. Um, well, five or ten even. If if you find that it's too squishy and you need it to set up, just set aside for a little bit. That will help it firm up some, and then it'll be a little easier to to give some subtle adjustments to the clay rather than having so much material move at a time. final step to crafting your sword is going to be to add a hilt in the pommel. And you could just do a nice simple hilt, you know, very flat and straight, but one of the, my favorite things to do at a lot of character is to actually create ra a wrap to the hilt. And to do that, no matter what detail you're putting on here, you're going to do the same mix as you did before, uh, whatever putty you're comfortable working with. In this case, I'm, do I'm using the half procreate half aves again and just spreading on a thin layer over the um, skinned wire armature of the hilt and just press that in there and smooth it out again be sure that you have the right shape and size uh, that you want in the final piece done before you start sculpting any detail this is actually more important on this stage uh, with with what we're going to do being wraps than it was on the hilt uh, because whenever you're sculpting with whenever you're sculpting you know pl clay or putty uh, but especially with putty because you have less recourse to fix it uh, once you start sculpting detail it's very it's a lot harder it's very hard to change the the bulk or the shape uh, without leaving creases and seams elements that you have to blend back together and, and, and it can be very difficult so make sure that you have have that done first um, don't let it be too thick and make sure that if, if you have some I don't know interesting shape details going on on the hilt you know where it gets thick thicker in one area thinner in another make sure you have that defined before sculpting any of the detail once that's done you can take your scalpel or exacto blade and just start uh, cutting in some uh, lines uh, all the way around the hilt and this will start simulating the straps. I'm going to go into a more in-depth tutorial down the road on how to do this but uh, for now you can see you know you basically just go around and create staggered shapes you don't want them to all be the same well you might be if, if you're not if you're doing a, a different maybe more tighter uniform wrap but I'm trying to make mine look a little more messy so you want to make sure that there's thin and thick shapes and that some are going in at angles down into other cuts they're not just all parallel to each other uh, one tip I can give when you're doing this or, or actually any is uh, again you you might want to let the putty set up uh, I usually cut the shape in pretty early just again because the putty's soft and, it, and it's a little easier but as you start having to refine the details of the hilt wrap it be, can be a lot easier 
to do that once the putty has firmed up some because otherwise it's too soft and will keep smushing around everywhere. The last little detail to add is the pommel and for that just put a little bit of putty on the end of your sword hilt and you can wait you can do this while the hilt's wet uh, you know still uncured or you can let it cure and set up make sure you aren't going to bump any of those details but just put a little bit on there and get it into shape if you can you can form the entire thing uh, as putty uh, with your tools getting it into shape uh, but what I did at least in this case I I got it mostly into shape and it was pretty close pretty good but I wanted to have a few more crisp edges so that's what's great about this mix, the 50-50 Procreate or Green Stuff and Aves, is it cures rock hard and is super easy to file. So I just took a file and I straightened it out a bit. And here's the result. Hope you like this tutorial and that it will help you make better swords for your miniatures. Um, if you uh, enjoy this video, please leave a like and comment below. I love reading your comments and responding to them. And yeah, subscribe if you want to see more content like this. And a huge thank you to all my patrons. Their support really helps me keep going and keep making this content. And I love interacting with them over on the Patreon page. So if, you'd like, if you're interested in that, head on over there and check it out. All right. Thanks again, guys. Keep sculpting.